Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the intergalactic area control warfare game Forbidden stars and this is a game which will see you move your fleet around a galaxy trying to take control of a certain number of objectives whilst beating up the other players building structures building new ships which will allow you to win the game and in this video we're going to give you a brief overview of the rules we're going to tell you what we do like what we don't like and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not forbidden stars is worth picking up so if you're new here then please consider subscribing to the channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this board games 4k so forbidden stars how do you play this game so there's three phases to this game. There's the planning phase. You've got the operations phase and then you've got the refresh phase. So in the planning phase, what you're going to be doing, you everyone's got these tokens, right? You've got eight tokens and you've got two of each type of token. And each token refers to a different action or command that you can do on your turn. What you'll do, you'll take one of these tokens, you'll put it face down on one of the systems that's on the game board, right? But in order to do that, you have to have units that are in that system or adjacent to that system. And adjacency means anything that is orthogonally adjacent, not diagonally adjacent, right? So once everyone's put down four tokens, then you will move on to the operations phase. And this is where you will be resolving the actions associated with the tokens that you played in the previous phase. So the first action that you can do, you can play the deploy token. And what this will allow you to do, this will allow you to spend material, which is basically money, the currency in the game, right? You'll be able to spend that, and then you'll be able to buy other units, which are other ground troops, which go on planets, or ships, which go in voids, which is the space areas, right? You can, you can buy them, or you can buy structures like cities, bastions and factories okay so with structures you bastions mean that you're protected from an orbital strike which we'll get into in a bit cities improve your command level which allow you to build better structures and better ships and factories will allow you to build in systems where you place the factory right so when you're buying ships you just look at the cost and the command level you've got to match those requirements and then you'll pay the money and then you'll put them in a, in that system where you've got the factory and the same applies to ground units but there's a, a limit to the amount of units that you can put in each system and that's displayed on the system tile itself right by the little skull things that you've got there so the second action that you can do is you can strategize and what this allows you to do this allows you to buy upgrade cards and you've got two types of upgrade cards you've got order upgrades and you've got combat upgrades and what you'll do if you want to buy an order upgrade you look for your order upgrade deck you'll pay the cost and whatever and then you'll put that card in front of you and that will give you another ability right so the second thing you could do is you could buy a combat upgrade and what you'll do you look through your combat upgrade cards and you've got two of each ones and you'll take the two out that you want to buy and replace them with the two that you want to take out your deck right and they'll give you special advantages during combat so the next thing that you can do is you can dominate and this is where you'll gain the assets from all of the regions or locations that are friendly to you so you look on the on each tile and then you'll gain the assets so you might have forged tokens which give you allow you to improve your command level temporarily or you might get reinforcements that you can play in battle and there's various other things right so you, you just take the assets that, that are displayed on all the friendly areas that you've got so the next thing that you can do, the final action you can do is you can advance. And this is where you'll be moving your ships through the other voids or onto worlds. And you can move ships that are on the tile where the command token is and one adjacent tile. Remember we said that that's all fungly, not diagonally, right? So if you move into an area that's contested where there's an, uh, an enemy then combat happens and combat is a, it's a little bit different to most of the types of these games so we, we've got it but it's got the advantage of just going through step by step so this is how you do combat you look at all the ships that you've got in that region and then you'll roll the amount of dice that's equal to your all your units combat value right and then you'll arrange the dice in the order of the 
symbols that come up out of the dice. And then what you'll do, you'll play a maximum of three rounds and you'll do what's called the execution round. You'll draw five combat cards and you'll choose one to play. You'll look at all the icons that are on that card. If you've got any combat or defense icons, then you'll add them to your, your attack strength or your defense strength, right? And then what you'll do, you'll assign damage. So the attacker will go first and what you'll do, you'll look at all the damage symbols and then you'll look at your opponent's defense symbols. You'll take the defense away from the attack and that's how much damage you take. And each unit has got a health value and then what you'll do you'll look at all the damage that you've got to assign and then if the damage is equal to or more than the unit's health value then that will be destroyed but if there's any left over you'll have to assign it to another unit but if if it's not enough to, to destroy it then the unit becomes routed and that means that you can't perform can't perform any combat can't move can't do anything right and it, it doesn't contribute to the victory conditions so you keep doing this until someone's destroyed or you do three you play three cards and then you look at all the morale symbols and whoever's got the most morale will be the victor of combat and then you'll do a bit of retreating so if the attacker has to retreat then it'll there's some special things that you've got to do and the defender then has to retreat and then you'll take the objective token from that region right and also you can capture any structures that your opponent had in the area so that's that's really basic uh, basically how combat works there's one other thing to do with combat if, is if there isn't any contested areas then you can perform an orbital strike and you'll roll a certain amount of dice and then you'll destroy that many units on the unfriendly world that's on that tile right so you'll keep doing this until somebody has collected as many objective tokens as there are players or if you get to round eight then it's the player that's collected the most objective tokens will win the game and that's basically very basically how you play forbidden stars right so what do we like about forbidden stars so the first thing that we like about Forbidden Stars is the theme, and we always love a bit of Warhammer, and the, the amount of Warhammer games that are in print now is pretty slim, so this is sort of basically sort of one of a kind, do you know what I mean? So all the classic Warhammer factions are in here. You've got the Eldar, you've got the Orcs, you've got the Warriors of Chaos in it, and they're all in here, so the theme is wonderful. So the second thing that we really like about Forbidden Stars is the combat. It's a mix of dice and cards, and... So all the combat cards are different. You might have the you might have a mega knobs, in which case your opponent will have to re-roll all of their defense dice, and then if you've got a knob or an onslaught, you'll gain a defense. Or you might have the rocket wagon, in which case a battle wagon or a kill cruiser, you'll gain free damage. Your opponent must retreat all of his units. So all these cards are different. They allow you to manipulate the battles when you play the free combat rounds, and we really like the combat because there's really nothing else like it in any game of this type. So the third thing that we really like about this one is it's we like to think of this as a sort of a compressed slimmed down version of Twilight Imperium and Twilight Imperium as you know doesn't come to the table very often due to its game length and this allows us to have that sort of space opera type thing on the table for maybe three hours with three players maybe an hour a player so for the full player count it's going to be about four hours long and that is infinitely better than playing Twilight Imperium. I'm not saying it's a better game than Twilight Imperium, but what I am saying is that the time it takes to play is halved, and that is always a good thing. So the fourth thing that we really like about it is the amount of choices that are available when you play the command token. So, you know, when you, when you first start playing this game, do you double down on the amount of units? Do you cram the amount of units you've got and max out the available units in each system? Or do you try and expand out quickly and try and capture the objective tokens quick before your opponents get to invest in quality ships and bastions and that sort of stuff or do you focus on upgrading your deck so that you can get the better combat cards when you do eventually have a fight so the choices of how the, the sort of pathways through this game are, are complex and they're interesting and it's a really really clever clever system so what don't we like about forbidden stars so the first thing that we really don't like about this game is the fact that it's out of print. And a few years ago, Games Workshop and Fantasy Flight had a bit of a set too, and it meant that all the games that Fantasy Flight produced with Games Workshop intellectual property were discontinued and then made out of print. And I don't think this one's ever, ever coming back. So if you do want it, it's going to be very, very expensive. And that is a real tragedy because the game is actually quite good. So the second thing that we don't like about this is we're a bit sort of contradicting ourselves in a sense because we're going to say that this is too long with four players and even though we said it's, it's a good length compared to Twilight Imperium that still doesn't mean to say that the game's length 
is too long because this we've played this and it has, it's gone on too long we've had to cut it short because it just went over four hours and that was enough we couldn't get it finished so i think it either from when we've played it it's either too short or too long because we've we've played this and it's been over in like an hour and a half with three players you know so it's a bit weird the way it works but what we're going to say is the length the game length for four players is far too long and it tends to drag itself out and drag you out with it so the next thing we're going to say we don't like about this is don't play with two players because it sucks right so there's no point it's, it's just you versus somebody else you're going to try it's just back and forth back and forth cat and mouse and there's no point in playing it because you need to have an odd number or maybe four players to get the best out of this game with two players the uh, the map is smaller and the amount of objectives is smaller you can have less combat and it's just not worth playing with two go and play something else so the final thing we're going to say that we don't like about this is with regards to combat is that if you happen to lose your combat through maybe a random die roll or the fact that you don't draw the cards you want your forces can get decimated very quickly and it's very very difficult to fight your way back after that disaster right so we're going to say, even though we like the combat system it is sort of prone to these sort of mismatches and the the random nature of the die rolls and the random card draw can leave you a bit frustrated on occasion so that's a, that's a negative so to summarize is forbidden stars worth playing today and in the future so we're going to say yes this is a wonderful game it is a uh, people don't like calling it this but we're going to say it's twilight imperium light we don't care what you think because that's what we are going to say it's twilight imperium light it halves the amount of time it takes to play Twilight Imperium and it, it condenses it all the way down. The rules are clear. The combat is, is, is a, it's a step by step thing. So it's not complicated and it does give you that epic feel in around about three to four hours, maybe a, a tad longer. So it's, it's still a long game, but it gives you that sort of Twilight Imperium feel in half the time and that's always a bonus and it's got wonderful components. The miniatures are fantastic. The artwork's fantastic. It really does capture that sort of weird sort of classical style of Warhammer 40,000 you know so we really like it we like the fact that it's got dice play and card play and combat and the fact that the rules are relatively simple once you get them under your belt so we're going to give this four out of five stars it's not perfect by any means there's the there's a few flaws with it like the randomness of the combat and the fact that you are going to struggle if you get wiped out during combat so uh yeah four out of five it's a wonderful sort of is it a 4x game i don't know yeah, so area control objective card based game so yeah we're gonna give it four out of five it's it's really good it's an absolute shame that it's out of print so you if you want to play this you're gonna to have to pay big money for it and i mean big money but it might come back it might come back but it's, it's probably going to get one of those sort of horrible reskins that uh nasty trevor check was good was threatening with prep you know he's going to turn it into some sort of i don't know crappy themed thing but he changed his mind and it, yeah so anyway we're going to recommend that you play forbidden stars if you can find it if you could afford it and that's forbidden stars so uh, if you're new here please consider subscribing to our channel leave a comment in that section down below We'll see you next time.